How much gold could a goblin hold if a goblin could hold gold? Well, if that goblin uh, wasn't surgical, but instead was from Egypt, that would be a whole lot of gold. We'll fill you in more on that one later. Hello and welcome back to Three Crowns, your bi-weekly home for Clash Royale esports news and beyond. I'm Rich Slayton. Joining me as always, my buddy over there, Andrew Guy. And of course, rounding up the squad, two-time regional champion for Clash Royale League, Joshua A.C. Sharon, and world champion coach of Team Liquid, Eric EB7. Benamu. Andrew, this is a big week, lots of results, lots of announcements. What's on the table today? Every week seems to be a big week now in the competitive Clash Royale scene. It is the summertime, which means we're getting closer and closer to that million dollar World Finals. Obviously, we'll be talking a lot more about that later. And talking about World Finals, the Masters Challenge has wrapped up. We have a new champion and another golden ticket holder. Uh, interesting note, though, it's not the same person. More on that later. The Snapdragon Pro Series is still rolling on as North America wrapped things up with a new champion. Europe, Middle East, North Africa is still going and still another golden ticket up for grabs. Hey, maybe Muhammad Light will grab that one too. Why not? He wins everything this year, but will he win this? An in-person tournament. That is right. Dream Hack is back, baby. July 1st, 2nd, and 3rd. There'll be a three-stage tournament going on. Of course, open qualifiers. This is the era of everyone, but there's also an invite stage for our top 16 player bracket. And of course, on our third day of competition, there'll be players battling it out with buy rounds and of course, their life on the line for 10,000 euros. How much is that in US dollars? Probably enough to buy a car. Woo, I am so excited for another in-person tournament. DreamHack, hey, where's my invite? While we're figuring that out, Rich, talk to me about the Masters Challenge. What happened here? What happened to the Masters Challenge? Well, the things you might expect and a little bit of the unexpected. Let's go ahead and jump in to the action. It was all about some of the biggest stars. Moogie in the winner's bracket, putting on a show the whole way through, defending here against Sandbox. Gets the damage in, holds off Sandbox for a win. Moogie was phenomenal on the day. More from him later. Also putting on some star-studded performances. The Frenchman, Viper, here up against Air Surfer in a pitched battle. Air Surfer in the lead, but the NATO just gives a little bit too much value, and Magic Archer gets that geometry. The math in damage lead goes to Viper. Air Surfer goes graveyard the opposite direction. Maybe a bit of an over-expenditure drill comes in, and once that drill comes in against your graveyard, NATO gets things done. Man, things are very, very close. All it will take is poison for Viper to put Air Surfer away. Viper was the comeback kid in this tournament, no questions asked, on a whole new one. And here is Viper against Moogie in the winner's bracket final. Winner guarantees themselves a shot at that golden ticket, and of course, a big piece of the pie. Viper playing Hog X NATO, you love to see it. He is way behind, but that rocket comes in. Now check out the fancy footwork here. Log gets it done, and the prediction NATO against the Magic Archer shuts it down. Viper wins game number one, but in game number three, Viper chooses to go with the Giant Skeleton Minor Loon deck. An unconventional choice has an unfortunate result. Moogie gets it done and sends Viper down to the elimination bracket. And talk about out of the frying pan and into the fire. You go from the defending world champion to, hmm, this guy named Mohamed Light. Have you heard of him? Viper ran into Mo, and this was just absolutely brutal. He was in a bad spot. Mohamed Light, of course, feeling good. Mo dropped down into the elimination bracket in the opening round of the tournament. Tournament battled his AA all the way back to here, gets it done, gets the win, one HP, no problem, and now we're ready for the big one. The rematch, Moogie versus Mohamed Light, CRL 2021 World Championship. Let's run that one back. Game number one of the first set, Mohamed Light connects, puts in huge damage and takes a big lead. And then in game number two, it's Moogie's turn to fire back by playing Mohammed Light's deck. That's the ultimate BM, the ultimate disrespect, running the Royal Hogs Archer Queen mirror EQ deck that Mo made to go ahead and put a lot of pressure on the left-hand side. But watch that Archer Queen on the right-hand side as she absolutely destroys that tower, puts it within EQ range. GG, well played. We're going to game number three. Now, reminder about this game three, Moogie was the winner's bracket champion, so he had a set to give where Muhammad Light only had one life. So Mo needs to get the win here. And of course, looking like it's pretty good at this moment. Moogie trying to fire back, but the pressure from Mo, and of course, as always, the deck selection from Muhammad Light was pristine throughout this event. 
Log gets in, Poison gets in. We're going to a super grand final. You want to see Mo and Moogie play a best of three? Well, how about two of them? And it all came down to game number three. Mohammed Light running Royal Hogs against Moogie's Lava Miner Giant Skeleton deck and just could not hold up against the pressure. Mohammed Light gets way ahead, and that's going to be it. You see the look on his face. Mohammed Light gets the win, gets $15,000, and Revenge is a dish best served cold. So what do you see? Well, there you go. It's the snow globe. Mohammed Light celebrating that victory. Let it go, Mo. Let it go. Doesn't have to. Now, Mohammed Light did win the championship, did win $15,000, but because he already has a golden ticket, Moogie gets that golden ticket. So now you have one, two, three world finalists. Sabo Basoto, Moogie, and Mohammed Light. Congratulations to all three of you. But Congratulations have to go around a bit further to our Snapdragon Pro Series as the North American Split 2 wrapped up. And we have a new face in the North American scene, Diego94. Here he is earlier in the rounds taking out the defending Snapdragon NA champion in Arden Toas. Great performance by Diego94. Deck selection was brilliant. Some great Game 3 deck selection in particular by Diego94. Here he is in the overall final against Harold who'd been great all day, but Diego was just on point, gets the big time push on the right hand side, finishes it off with some nice fireball cycle, gets the win, gets the championship for the North American series of Snapdragon Pro Series and a pretty stacked bracket as well. You see Boss in there, Mini Minter, Bruzani, Magma, Ian77, Arden Toas, but it's Diego94 coming out on top for this one. But Snapdragon is not done. That's just the NA portion. The Europe, Middle East, North Africa region has its split two final Saturday, June 18th. And the top four from that will qualify to the golden ticket bracket. That's right. Tune in Saturday, June 25th at snapdragonproseries.com to watch and see who will get the next golden ticket for our Clash Royale League World Finals. Speaking of golden tickets, there's another golden ticket event, the return of the original dual mode format. Clash Royale All-Stars is back with a golden ticket just for Latin America and North America, plus a $50,000 prize pool. Open qualifiers run June 18th to June 25th. And of course, if you haven't had enough Clash Royale esports yet, GKR Leagues has kicked off $18,000 for that one. And of course, you can follow along all the action there at GKR Leagues on Twitter. That's enough for our updates and recaps. What you need right now is some advice on how you can participate in those big events, how you can compete. For that, let's go to our resident expert, Joshua AC Sharon, for a look at some of the best decks in competitive right now. The meta deck check is back or back. Uh, I wanted to rhyme. I wanted to be clever like them. Uh, you know, let's just get it started. So deck number one, we have E-Giant Control. This is the deck that Muhammad Light had the most success with in the tournament. The E-Giant can take out towers in one push. The overwhelm is crazy. The defense is insane. You have the Inferno Dragon for any tank deck. You have the Mother Witch for any spam deck. You have the Golden Knight NATO for any kind of cool, you know, combo attack with the Bomber plus the E-Giant. The synergy in the deck is brilliant. The only thing you have to worry about, if you're going against Mortar, that's going to be a problem. With that, deck number two, it's going to be Mortar Control. You got the Mortar, you have the Giant Skeleton, you have the Guards. This new variation of the Mortar Minor plus Guards is so deadly because that defense with the Guards, you no longer have the Skellies and Valk. You no longer have the potential to get overwhelmed. That Giant Skeleton, those Guards, that, that that combination of defense, you never overwhelm, but you never outcycle either. Even when you don't have a mortar that you can place on defense against, you know, a, an RG attack, guards plus musketeer plus log, everything can push it off the tower. The defense is so strong, and then you eventually overwhelm with chip damage from the miner and poison. It's a balanced deck. Like always, mortar is it, it, it's unstoppable. Deck number three, we have a golden knight drill control. And this deck right now is my favorite deck in the game. The Ghost Pressure, the Cannon Card on defense against opposing Mortars, against opposing Expos, the Golden Knight, NATO Opportunities, the Magic Archer, NATO Opportunities. There are so many different ways to be an opponent. And the reason why it's my favorite deck, I mean, you 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 always have to be thinking. It, it, it's not a one-dimensional deck. There's so many different ways, so many different possibilities, and there's no perfect answer. At the end of the day, you can't just Magic Archer for the win because your opponent can predict with a Fireball, predict with a Tesla at the bridge. So you always have to be innovating, you always have to be thinking. 
And again, it's just so strong. All three of these decks are just so good. But that's enough for the decks. That's enough for the deck selection. Let's bring it back to Rich and Andrew. Thanks a lot, Josh. And we've given you tons of info today. What's new? What's upcoming? What can you do? And what's what's Andrew doing on your... Uh, uh, just building some decks, Rich. I took some ah. uh, advice from our in-house pro there. I, I need some new decks, and I love a good new mortar deck. Well, uh, you know, some great new decks. Obviously, you love mortar decks. Some great chances, and at all sorts of events, that LADAM All-Stars Clash Royale event coming up very, very soon. Open qualifiers. But, Andrew, they know now how to qualify, how to watch. What else should our viewers do now that we're done with our show? Well, there was so much information dropped in this episode. If you're not watching Three Crowns by now, you must not care about winning that million dollar prize at World Finals. So subscribe to the channel, turn on notifications, follow Esports Royale EN on Twitter, check out esports.clashroyale.com, follow me, follow Rich, follow Josh, do all of those things. I'm going to keep yelling this at you until they don't let me. <laughs> well, that's it for today's show. Do what Andrew says, and we'll see you back here next time on Three Crowns.